Now time for the seven things you'll be talking about today. Number seven. Uh, following the attempted assassination on former President Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, social media buzzed with reaction. Uh, members of the media asked themselves, should I continue being a jerk? Uh, should I continue being terrible? And they said, yeah, yeah, we, we should be. Uh, but one guy, Baltimore Ravens player Marlon Humphrey, a former standout at Hoover High School and the University of Alabama, expressed his support for Trump, stating, quote, Trump took a bullet for America. Humphrey has had a notable career in the NFL with three Pro Bowl selections and a first-team All-Pro honor in 2019, shared his sentiments on social media. And uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, I think a lot of people have also come out and said, okay, this is it. I'm supporting Donald Trump, uh, and this is one of the reasons why. Uh, in other football news, NCAA 2025 is out. Uh, so 45-year-old men and 16-year-old boys uh, are going to have something to do this weekend. Oh, and Nick Saban picked Texas and Georgia for the SEC Number championship. Number six. Uh, Alabama Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth uh, condemned what he called a jihadist-style attack on traditional Christian values, uh, citing societal acceptance of practices he considers sinful. Inspired by a sermon, Ainsworth criticized the radical left for allegedly promoting abortion, transgender surgeries, and disrespect for law enforcement in the military, or as I like to call it, the Democrat platform. Uh, I mean, that, that's essentially what that is. Uh, the Democrat platform and Ainsworth uh, is speaking out uh, against that uh, and feeling uh, that he needs to say something about it. I thought it was interesting. He attributed the attempted assassination of Donald Trump to the left's rhetoric and urged a return to Christian values while offering prayers for those uh, affected uh, by the incident. And uh, he's 100% right. I mean, th th there's an all-out attack on traditional values and, and people find themselves... Uh, pretty fed up uh, with this kind of stuff, and I and I think that's a uh, that's good that people are speaking out against it, including Will Ainsworth. Number five, uh, Alabama-founded polling firm Signal. Uh, their CEO Brent Buchanan uh, is predicting a significant shift in the 2024 election landscape following the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Uh, with disengaged voters now likely to view Trump's strength more favorably compared to Biden's perceived weaknesses. That you say perceived strength and perceived weaknesses, um, I call that um, reality. Uh, it, a, a pretty obvious reality uh, that exists uh, in our world. And I, I think we, we all see what's going on here. And we should all be very clear uh, about it. And uh, that new uh, shift here, as Buchanan puts it, uh, he says, will solidify GOP support for Trump and down ballot candidates. Uh, the bulk, here's a quote, the bulk of voters who determine this election usually aren't tuned in 113 days out. They are now. And I believe that. There's, I, I don't think there's any question about that. People are awake. Number four. Democrats were so certain the former president, Donald Trump, uh, was a threat to democracy that they sought to do something unconstitutional to stop him. Uh, Judge Eileen Cannon dismissed the federal criminal case against Donald Trump regarding his handling uh, of national security secrets, citing the unconstitutional appointment uh, of special counsel Jack Smith. Fox News' Jonathan Turley noted, of all the cases that could be dismissed, uh, this would be at the top of the list. Uh, this was the greatest threat, and for now, at least, it's gone. Uh, but not all people are happy with this. Uh, there are a lot of people who are uh, very, very upset uh, that this went down this way. Jack Smith uh, will appeal, uh, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But I think this is pretty clear. Number three. Uh, Alabama's RT delegates were in Milwaukee to be the first to cast their votes to name Donald Trump the Republican nominee for president. Uh, Alabama delegates at the Republican National Convention expressed shock and relief after the attempted assassination of former President uh, Donald Trump. Uh, they quoted some individuals in a Yellowhammer story, uh, Logan Glass and Alex Reynolds, who emphasized their prayers for Trump and those injured uh, and uh, their determination to continue their work at the convention. Uh, Katie Britt uh, spoke at the convention, and, and she uh, was one of the uh, very strong speakers there uh, advocating for Donald Trump. Uh, and she, I think, did a very admirable job uh, in her speech. 
Uh, she said, uh, American opportunity is in decline, just like Joe Biden. That was her uh, her statement there. That's getting a little bit of attention, as it should. Uh, but I think Katie Britt did a fantastic job. Number two. A uh, radical leftist would not be deterred by calls for calm at the first day of the Republican National Convention because by 1 p.m., they were marching in the streets and they were chanting, No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. Which, by the way, it is clear they have nothing <laughs> to do and nothing to to actually complain about because they've been saying the same nonsense for like 10 years. Good Lord, let's, let's come up with something new. Like, what did Trump do last week that upset you? Come up with a chant about that. Uh, but they weren't the only ones. Uh, President Joe Biden kept up his threat to America rhetoric. And he continues saying, no, I'm going to keep saying it after saying we should all chill out. So when he says we should all calm down and not say stuff, did he mean everyone else but him? Oh, of course he did. That's what they always mean. Now, time for the number one thing you'll be talking about today. Uh, Former President Donald Trump has now picked his vice presidential candidate. He passed over North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, who I thought had the Burgum momentum, but he didn't. Uh, He passed over United States Senator Marco Rubio and Tim Scott uh, to choose Ohio United States Senator J.D. Vance. Uh, On Truth Social, Trump praised Vance's credentials and alignment with his policies, his populist approach, and America First policies. He he also noted the strong connection to working class voters and an extensive military, well, military political career, let's put it that way, an extensive experience uh, in the military and his political career, which is off to a, a pretty short start, but... Been there a year and a half, and all of a sudden, he's a vice presidential nominee. Uh, So this guy appeals, uh, he believes, to young voters. Uh, Populist movement, his book, Hillbilly Elegy, and the movie uh, about it were hits uh, that a lot of people saw. I guarantee there's a lot of people right now who are going, I don't like that movie anymore. I don't like that book anymore. I didn't know it was going to be this guy. Oh, he's a Republican. All that stuff that we normally see. Uh, But but here's here's what I will also say. They are going to go... For the next hundred and something days, you're going to hear, well, J.D. Vance said that Trump was Hitler. Well, J.D. Vance said this. J.D. Vance said that, which is stupid to say Trump is Hitler. But J.D. Vance has said, yes, I said those things. But guess what happened? Multiple years passed since then. Donald Trump was president. He did a good job, and now I support him. Completely reasonable response. He didn't downplay what he said. He said, okay, I was wrong, uh, and I'm glad I was, and now I'm on board. Trump supporters who are upset about this, Donald Trump got over it. You might want to get over it as well. To the American media, you can complain about this all you want as long as every time you mention Kamala Harris, you talk about all the bad stuff she said about Joe Biden. As long as you're going to do that, I'm perfectly fine with this conversation if we want to have it that way. If you don't want to do that, well, then you're just hypocrites. And, you know, let's just be real. We kind of already know that you are. Okay? Good. Now, now, this segment of the program brought to you by my friends at Two Men in a Truck. I know about Two Men in a Truck, and you need to know about them, too. When it comes time for you to make your next move, you don't want to do it yourself. You want Two Men in a Truck to do it for you. Why? Because they're going to do it better. How do you all know this? Because I've been a part of it. They've come to my house. they moved my stuff. they made me very happy, and they'll make you very happy as well. Two Men in a Truck, Huntsville.com. They have what's known as the Grandma Rule. Treat everyone the way you'd want your grandma to be treated. You want your grandma to be treated well, right? Of course you do. Two men in a truck, Huntsville.com. Let them help you out today. And when you do, of course, make sure you tell them Dale Jackson sent you. If you'd like to weigh in here, you can do so. Uh, QC Kinetics Free Speech phone lines at 866-494-WVNN. And there is the uh, ScoutPestControl.com WVNN hot take text line at 866-494-9866. Or uh, you can always email me. You've got mail. Dale at WVNN.com. We got a lot coming up. Don't forget, answer the comment section comes alive question. Uh, that is right there, ready for you right now uh, on our WVNN Facebook page. Get your questions in for 10 with him. And believe it or not, we have a Tricky Trivia Tuesday question with Terry's Pizza as well. Man, we're busy. Stay tuned. Lots coming up. 
Get WVNN's Dale Jackson 7 Things You Should Be Talking About Today right in your email box every morning. Go to yellowhammernews.com and sign up today.